Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Um, we're going to st uh, start Sabbath school, and we're going to have a quick word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord, thanking you for your mercy and your kindness. Lord, we come to you asking for forgiveness of our sins, Lord. Lord, we ask that self may die, that Christ may be uplifted, and I pray that, Lord, we can be like more like you, be more like a Christian, Lord, and that we can make all the things of this world be removed out of our lives. We pray for the, those that are watching, Lord, that they can be able to grow spiritually as we grow spiritually from this study, Lord. Guide us and keep us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. So we're going through the last uh, Sabbath school quarterly uh, for this uh for this quarter, yes, <laughs> and it's on um, health and temperance, and we're just going to recap a little bit on what we learned from part one so we can get back to the day and understand what God is trying to do to us. So let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. And it says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. So we see right here, whatever we eat, whatever we drink, and whatever we do, we should do all to the glory of God. So we learned from last Sabbath school, our last Sabbath school, that the health message was not only giving us a physical health message, but was preparing us for the spiritual health message. And we learned that by putting this health message to apply to our lives, we will uplift our spiritual life. So now what we're trying to do by this study, we're trying to understand how we can put both together to prepare ourselves for Christ's soon coming, for the right hand of the gospel, with the spiritual life must combine as one for we can be a perfect Christian in Christ Jesus. We learn that we understand that diet is a very important thing for God. Diet is a very important thing. We understand that God gave his people a simple diet and he wanted us to eat of this diet. But as well, he gave us a spiritual diet as well, and we went to the scriptures from last week that Christ said to the woman, if you will drink of this water, you shall have an everlasting water. We learned in the scripture, it says, whatsoever we drink, we should do it all to the glory of God. We know that Christ said, if you will eat my flesh and drink my blood, you shall have eternal life. So when Christ was trying to say these things to us, he was trying to say, whatever we watch, Whatever we speak, whatever we hear, this is the physical, this is the spiritual food that the Lord wants us to have. So the things that we are reading, the things that we are hearing, and the things that we are speaking, this is the spiritual food. We also learned that God had a standard for his people in dress reform, that he gave a dress reform message. And we also understand that dress reform message was connected with Ephesians chapter 6. Let's go there. Let's look at it. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Can we get a reader for that? You said Ephesians 6, 10 to 18? Yes, sir. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day 
and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. 18? Uh, mm, yes. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints, for all saints. Amen. So we see that when God gave a dress reform message, it was not only for the woman, but it was for the man. But we see that the application was applying to the spiritual dress reform message, the spiritual dress reform message, which you can find in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Then we see right here, as we go through, we left off on number 10. Number 10 says, what command was given to Adam after he had sinned? What command was given to Adam after he had sinned? Genesis chapter 3, verse 19. Genesis chapter 3, verse 19. And the word of the Lord says, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread until thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken from the dust, and thou art, and unto the dust shalt thou return. What was the Lord trying to say to Adam right then and there? What was he trying to explain to Adam in a simple way? Any brothers and sisters, anybody? That you're going to die. That you're going to die, right? Amen, amen. You're going to die, but you're going to also return from where you came from. And I think sometimes people tend to think that um, you hear people talk about um, evolution or we evolve or we come from, you know, from the bang theory, or whatever, all the foolishness that they talk about. But God clearly let Adam know here that it is from the dust of the ground that you were formed by my hand and that that also is the dust of the ground that um, you shall return to. And I think God is trying to let all of us know you know, sometimes man thinks he's greater than what he really thinks he is, that he's the, the greatest of everything, that he can do anything and everything. But God is letting you know that sometime during your lifetime, you will return back to where you came from, and that's from the dust of the earth. And it's humbling, you know. It's humbling. And I think we as Christians, we have to take that into effect, that God gives us such a small frame of time to do his, his bidding here on this earth, every one of us. Amen. Mike in the back. Karima, you have the mic. I just wanted to touch on um, one of the aspects of uh, Genesis 3.19 that's very important. It says, in the sweat of thy face, Okay, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Now, most people would think, okay, that's a, you know, they, they don't really look at that verse, but in other words, we need to be, you know, that, that to me shows exercise. It shows that you have to work to get your food. You know, if you think about it, how do we work to get our food? You know, we should be having a garden or something. You see what I'm saying? We know Adam, he was a gardener. So in the sweat of his face, that's how he would get his food. And that, I think that's a very important lesson because a lot of people eat um, chemical-based foods like, you know, Twinkies and stuff like that. It's not really food. You know what I mean? But when you look at the vegetables that come from the ground, the vegetables that come from the ground have a high mineral makeup. So what happens when you sweat? When you're sweating, you're sweating out minerals. So how do you replenish the minerals that you sweat out? 
It's by eating the vegetables from the ground. Amen, amen. So as you guys explained the physical, now I'm going to give you guys the spiritual application where God was trying to speak to Adam. God was trying to say to Adam, Adam, you must deny self. How can we prove that? Did not the scripture say when Jesus was praying, he sweated what? Drops of blood. Why was he sweating so much? Because he was praying, he was denying himself, and he was thinking about souls. So he said, God said to Adam, Adam, from the day that you live until the day that you die, you're going to have to think about winning souls to God. What was, what was Adam's job? What was his job? To do what? To till the ground, right? How can we prove this, that God was saying to Adam, Adam, you're going to be sweating. You're going to be sweating. Are we sweating for the souls that are out there that are dying? Are we sweating for the souls that are lost and know nothing of Christ's soon coming? He was saying to Adam, Adam, you have to get to another level. But let's prove it by Scripture. Let's prove that he was speaking of these things. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. And it's, go ahead. Um, Matthew 13, 1 through 8. Yes. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. And great multitude were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sword. Can you take this over? Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon the stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness on earth. And when the sun was up, and they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. What's the last number? Uh, verse eight. That's it, yes. So we see right away, praise God, brother. Yeah. We see right here <coughs> that this ground that Adam had to till, he had to be sweating. And this sweating was not talking about just a regular sweat. It was talking about the spiritual sphere of concern of lost souls. And we've seen that the tilling of the ground was man. That Adam had to till the hearts of man, and he had to plant the seed of the word of God in man. This is the spiritual connection what God was trying to teach Adam that day. From the day that you live to the day that you die, your job will be for your race to tell them of the redemption, of the sacrifice, of the life of Christ, that he will come upon this earth and redeem us, and you must till the seed. You must till the ground and plant the seed. Number... I want to go back one number. 
And uh, number nine, what besides pride and gluttony is mentioned as one of the previous uh, prevailing sins of the last day? Can I get a, a, a reader for Ezekiel 16:49? Now let's combine this. We know that we must be sweating for souls. We know that we must have proper exercise, that we have the energy to go out there and win souls. We know that we must have a proper dress, a proper dress reform message that is putting on the whole armor of God. Now we got to see what is a sin in this last day that is holding people back. Ezekiel 16, verse 49. Put your hand up. Ezekiel 16, verse 49. Yes. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister, Sodom, pride, fullness of bread and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. Amen. So what was this great sin in this last day that God knew that was going to be holding his people back? Anybody? Well, from the text, it says pride and the fullness of bread and abundance. So, in other words, people um, in general have so much. That's like the thing where I've told to each one of us when we knock on doors and you ask someone, is there... Do you have need of anything when we ask for prayer for them? And they stand there, they literally, they look, and they see the jet skis and the boat and the RV and the three cars and the big house, and, it's, and they shake their head, literally looking at you like, I have everything, you know, I have need of nothing. And so this is the, the thing that's taken the hearts of men today in where they just want so much of the earthly pleasures, the earthly things. And even God's people have to be very careful that they, too, do not get caught up into that phase or that way of lifestyle. But to remember, as you said in the, before, how Adam tilling for the souls of, of men, you know, so they can be prepared to meet the Lord and go to heaven. Amen. Amen. And then we see another context right there that was very important. Idleness. What is the definition of idleness? She said, she said empty. Empty? Yeah, Amen. and also doing nothing. Idleness. Wikipedia, or the definition of idleness is inaction, laziness, inaction, Laziness. God knew that if his people did not have this health message, physically and spiritually, if his people did not have the dress reform message, physically and spiritually, if the people was not tilling the ground, they were in, in action, that means not doing what they were supposed to do, and they were in laziness. Idleness in the Bible comes up three times, Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49, and Proverbs chapter 31, verse 27. Can I get a reader for that one? Proverbs chapter 37, uh, 31, verse 27. Now remember, last week, as you guys go to that scripture in Proverbs 31, verse 20, we learned that this woman in Proverbs was not a physical woman because it was a prophecy. This woman, we learned that his mother told him, King Lemet, not to drink of the wine. What wine? The wine of Babylon, the false doctrine wine. We learn that this woman was the church of God. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 27. I'll read Proverbs chapter 31, verse 27, and it says, She looked well to the ways of her household, and eat it not the bread of what? Idleness. So if this woman is the church of God, and it's saying that she eat not the bread of idleness, what is it saying? That this woman right here, this is a true woman of God. This church is a working church in action. 
This is a church that is actively doing the work of God. This is a church that is tilling the ground, the hearts of man on the daily basis. This is a church that is sweating for souls. This is a church that has the true dress reform message. This is a church that has the true health and spiritual health reform message that we found in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18. And as we see right here, we see something clearly right here. What is her household? What is this church household? The people of God, the household, the body, the people of God. Let's look at another verse that it has for idleness. Because it's only three times that it's in the Bible. Ecclesiastics chapter 10, verse 18. Let's prove that this household is the people of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 18. 10, 18 says, But by much slothfulness the building decayeth, and through idleness of the hands the house droppeth through. Amen, amen. So we see here, Elder, we see... The reason why the church of God is in so much problems right now, because they're unactive and they have become lazy from tilling the, for not tilling the ground. That's why the church is decaying. This is why the church is shaking. Because it is an inactive of winning souls to God. What we're doing, we're laying the foundation of the health reform message, the right hand of the gospel, and the spiritual health reform message, and we are combining it as one. And we're seeing clearly that the work that God has called us to do, because sometimes we meet many of our brothers and say, oh, we don't need this health reform message. We don't need to eat these things. But what they're not understanding, by God giving them this physical health reform message, it's going to help them to understand the spiritual health reform message. So we see inactiveness. The church of God has become unactive, not caring for souls, not going out there and winning souls. And individually, individually, it has become much inactive. We have become lazy. And not a lazy of exercise that as well, but a laziness of winning souls for God. Let us lay the foundations. Number 11, we went through number 10, we see that Adam in the sweating. Number 11, can I get a reading for number 11? Number 11, let's see what it says. I'll read number 11, the elder in the back. Number 11 says, what law does Paul lay down on this point? 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. Amen. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, in verse 10, it says... For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Amen, amen. So now we see right here, we learn what is eating. What is eating? We learn it's eating food, proper food, but what else did we learn Christ said that eating was? And he taught the Jews in that time. What did he say to them again? If you would eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. And the Jews said to what? What did the Jews say to him? How can we eat your flesh? How can we drink your blood? Why? Because their minds was not clear to understand the spiritual identity of what he was trying to explain to them. The scripture said, as the elder read, even when we were with you, this command you, 
that if any would not work, neither should he eat. What is it saying? It's saying if we're not tilling the ground, working for souls for God, then we're not going to gain no victory over sin. We cannot gain victory over sin if we are not witnessing to others about Christ and his soon coming. We cannot, I say it again, gain victory over sin and we will not get more bread. Because what, what, what does the Bible say? If we are faithful in the little, that means the things that we learn in the word of God, the little things that we learn in the word of God, he's going to give us what? More bread. So, need it. so I would say to you, if you are not working for souls for God, you will not get more bread to eat from the Lord. This was Paul was trying to explain. If you don't work for souls, neither shall you eat. How can you eat more? Because what happens when you go out there and speak to people? They ask you a question. You say, oh, I don't have the answer. But I'll come back and I'll what? Give you the answer. What did you go do? You went to eat more because you went to work. And you had to eat more to have more strength to go back again and witness again. And it happens over and over and over and over again. And this is how the Lord gives us more spiritual bread. More spiritual bread. It's a, um, number 12. We're on number 12 now. We're on number 12. And it says, Who wants to read that? Yes. Go ahead. What is our responsibility in view of the might of God has in the light of God has given? And that's in John twelve thirty five. Yeah. And I'm gonna try to read that. When Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you, walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you, for he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth. Amen. And um, First John. Chapter 1, verse 7. I'll read it. And it says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanse us from all sin. So as we said right here, if you don't work, neither shall you eat. It's a very clear context. If we're not working for souls, we cannot get more bread from heaven. For there's no reason to give us more bread from heaven because we're not sharing what we already know from the bread from heaven. And if, and if the light is there and we walk in the light, then what happens? We're going to overcome all sin. Yes, my sister. Oh, I just wanted to read note seven. Mm -hmm. In order to be fitted for translation, the people of God must know themselves. They must understand in regard to their own physical frame that they may be able with the psalmist to exclaim, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. It is best for those who claim to be sons and daughters of God to avail themselves while they can of the opportunities now presented to gain a knowledge of the human system and how it, and how it may preserve and help. The Lord will not work a miracle to preserve anyone in health who will not make an effort to obtain knowledge within his reach concerning this wonderful habitation that God has given. Amen. Amen, sister. So we see right here, and people can say it all the time, oh, this health process, it doesn't have to do nothing with your salvation. My brothers and sisters, yes, it does. It clearly does. Because... If the mind is clear by the food we eat, 
that we'll have a greater spiritual understanding of the word of God and we'll have a greater understanding of our desire to win souls and to give what we have eaten to others. Yes, my brother. I think um, I made this comment, I think it was last week, but, you know, how many people have made wrong decisions because of diet? You know, we will, we will never, ever really know the answer to that question until the judgment. But, I mean, think about uh, Belshazzar. Belshazzar you know, when he was drinking the wine of, of Babylon, the literal wine of Babylon, you know, all those things. And he had a great feast. He had an abundance of food. He had too much. And he decided to praise the gods of silver, of gold, of wood, of stone, all those various false gods. But little did he know that it was the time of his visitation, okay? Now, how many people have made fatal and wrong decisions because of the fact that they don't have the ability to really reason or think. You know, it was said before that um, improper food combinations, things of that nature can cause fermentation of the stomach, thus creating alcohol in your system. You know, I think sometimes we we neglect the, the simple things of life. You know, if we neglect the simple things of life, how is God going to make us faithful over the bigger things in life? You see what I'm saying? I don't know. I just think that I, I remember I was talking to um, some of my coworkers yesterday, and they were talking about age and things of that nature and how, you know, when you get old, you're going to need a walker and all this stuff. And I told him, I said, well, by the grace of God, I'll never need that. You know, we have to take care of the physical frame. If we don't take care of the physical frame and we just do what everybody else in the world does, we might be in a nursing home at 60 years old. You see what I'm saying? 60 is not, 60 is not that old. But a lot of people take pride in the fact that, oh, I have health care. Oh, yes, I, you know, I can go to the best doctors and, and get my surgery. My thing is health, that's not health care. It's health care to the world, but health care to me is taking care of your body so that you never have to go to the doctor for any of those ailments. You know, when I think about Adam, Adam, he sweated to get his food. You know, he, he literally tilled the ground. How much more should we sweat? And I'm talking in a physical sense. Physically, sweating is good for us. It's good for us to get the exercise. It's good for us to get the fresh air and the sunshine and all of these various things. But we have a situation where nowadays, you know, people, and I used to do it too. I remember years ago, I used to go to the hometown buffet, all you can eat. I would load up my plate, and I would go back three times and, and load up my plate and eat all that food. But you know what? The Lord has given us a health message. We have to take care of the physical frame. Now, if you remember uh, the sanctuary, in the sanctuary, the temple was cleansed, right? The, the temple was also sanctified, but how can God dwell in our temples if we don't take proper care of our, our temples, how could he possibly dwell in a filthy temple? Just my two cents. Mm. I'm, I'm very glad he, he mentioned that 60 is not too, too old. Thank you. <laughs> and it's, it's very funny that I say that because I've passed 60 and moving forward, but you know, as I look back as a child, <clears throat> I'm very thankful for parents or the lifestyle that that we did live that we did live at that time to eat a lot of the foods that come from the ground and um, the thing that really hurts me <clears throat> the most is seeing the homeless 
and I sit there and I see the people every day because I'm in the city working, but I drive by them. In my mind, I say to myself, how did they come to this point? And there's a lot of young ones and there's a lot of older people, but the thing is, is the choices that were made and the choices physically of what they've taken into their body. And this thing with the drugs, it is the quick destroyer of the physicality of, of our bodies. And you know, medicine is, is fine. It has its needs when certain things arise in emergencies. But this stuff with the pills and all this stuff has, has destroyed men and women at a rapid, rapid pace to where they don't have any mind. They're just walking the earth with anything. And it really, really hurts me. But I think um, if we can catch what, what we're talking about, sharing the word to catch the people before they get to those stages of death, you know, where you're just wasting your, your life away. Um, but God can do anything. He can reach anyone at any time. So I pray that, that, uh, that you know, we as God's servants, that we do go out there and, and till that and sweat and till the ground for, for the people. Yeah. I just wanted to add to that about the, uh, the uh, physical aspect of it. Um, God wants us to deliberately um, put what we need to put into um, our system and our uh, go the extra mile <laughs> just like I have indulged and I'm paying the price and I have mixed up things and this and that now I have to not only do 10 miles but I'm doing 15 14 <laughs> miles now you have to you know put make those deliberate choices and do those extra things and extra um, things for your body as he you know give us the opportunity take advantage of you know, taking care of yourself. Just wanted to say something about the drugs. I never will forget. Um, Elder Hall knows my old uh, next door neighbor on, uh, I'm not going to mention the street just in case. But I used to, uh, it, as a teenager, I, I lived in Lancaster off of Avenue J8. But my old next door neighbor, you know, he was, he was a smart kid. You know, he was 100% normal, no problems whatsoever, but he started dabbling in the drugs. And he's right. I mean, that will destroy you, not just physically, but mentally. It's like he started dabbling in the drugs, and I never will forget coming back and visiting my old next-door neighbor and seeing uh, this young man. He just, he was never the same. You know, those drugs really took a toll on him. But what he was saying was true is it's just one choice, one bad choice. I mean, think about it. How do people get to the point where they're 500 pounds? It's just one bad choice at a time. You know, and if we ever get to the point where, you know, we're that heavy, I, I think it's deliberately wrong because now you're, there's no way you could be in your right mind. You know, there's no way you could make right decisions. Amen. So as the, the congregation explained to you guys that's watching online, that they, the physical aspect. Now, they were talking about Belzezar, correct? Was it? And how he ate these foods drank. and drunk the wine. What was the result of this situation? Was it a physical result or a spiritual result? It was a spiritual result that fell upon him. A spiritual hand came. Not a hand of this world, but a spiritual hand wrote that judgment. And by that judgment, what came upon him? Death. So we can say that the health message is not important. These things are not important. Exercise, water, sunlight, proper diet. But what we're doing, we're setting ourselves up for a spiritual judgment. The elder said last week that we talk about, oh, we have to run to the mountains, run to the mountains. If we're not prepared to run to the mountains, 
what's going to happen to us? You're not going to make it to the mountains. You're not going to make it to the mountains, right? Now, we know that whoever didn't prepare themselves to make it to the mountains, they're missing something what? Spiritually. They have to. Because spiritually, God had to be working upon their hearts for year after year after year after year after year after year to get them to say, hey, you need to physically be ready for what's going to come apart. And now when the time was to go to the mountain and they couldn't make it, what mountain they couldn't make it up? The mountain of God. See, they couldn't make it up the mountain of God. They couldn't make it because they didn't prepare themselves physically and they did prepare spiritually. I, I promise you, I promise you, brothers and sisters, every person that's going to make it in this generation to heaven that call themselves Adventists, they're going to be ready physically and spiritually. I promise you, in this generation, every person that call themselves Adventists, they're going to be ready physically and spiritually. And if they're not, it's because they lack something spiritually. Because when you think about this diet, the people that you see fighting this diet or fighting this, these laws of health, are people that you see that are battling spiritually. Those are the ones that are fighting it. They say, oh, we don't have to do this. Any Adventist that you see that say that they're missing something spiritually. Any, you go talk to your brothers and sisters in different congregations, and you'll see when they say something, oh, we don't have to eat that food, or you see the pastor uh, that's eating meat or so forth, and you go listen to his message. I bet you it's a Weakened spiritual message. Yes, my brother. Just wanted to, um, I, I liked your point about, I, I didn't think about it that way with Belshazzar. As a result of violating the physical laws, he got, you know, there was a spiritual sentence that was put upon him. That, that was a, a very powerful uh, thing. But if you think about Romans 6 and verse 23, it says, uh, the wages, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So for him to have received death, that would mean that he was sinning, not just praising the gods of, of silver and gold and all that stuff, but what caused him to start sinning, it was through overabundance. But I never will forget, I remember um, listening to Thomas Jackson explain what cancer is. And it just blew my mind because it was so, it was simple, but it was profound. Now, he said that DNA is the law for your body, okay? Now, think about the spiritual moral law that we're supposed to be keeping. We're supposed to be keeping the Ten Commandments, right? Now, the law for your body is the DNA. So when you break the physical laws, you end up with cancer. So all cancer is is when you're breaking the physical law of your body. So as a result of you overindulging in various things, you end up getting cell reproduction that's out of control, you know, and all these other uh, various diseases. Now, think about this. Now, you, you made mention of uh, a couple of things when you see ministers who say, well, we don't have to keep this, then their, their messages are weak, and I, I do believe that. But I want us to turn to the book of uh, Matthew, chapter 7. In Matthew, chapter 7, beginning with um, uh, verse number 13. And in Matthew, chapter 7, Beginning in verse number 13, it says, it says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Now, there's a lot of people who, you know, they want to do what's easy. 
if we're doing what's easy, then we're going to the, to the wide gate, okay? In verse 14, it says, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Why is it few? Because it's not easy. You know, it's not easy to deny self. But through Christ Jesus, we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. Amen. And that's the bottom line, is the only way we're ever going to be able to walk into that straight and narrow way is if we have Jesus Christ and we're relying upon Jesus Christ to both will and to do of his good pleasure. You know, it reminds me of uh, Sister White's vision I never will forget about reading her vision, you know, and how they, everybody started off on the path. But as they got closer and closer to that holy city, what happened? That path got more and more and more and more narrow. And they found out that as they went along, there are certain things that they could no longer take with them. They had to leave the wagons behind. Oh, no, we got to go on foot. I think spiritually... That is a very powerful illustration. You know, if we don't have to do health reform, then we're breaking the laws of our body, the laws of our being. How can the Holy Spirit dwell inside of someone who is breaking the law? If we are breaking the Ten Commandments, we don't have the Holy Spirit with us. And if we are breaking the physical laws, that go against the well-being of our bodies, the Holy Spirit cannot dwell with us. Amen. Amen. So we see, as the brother was saying, that as the path goes on, it's going to get harder and harder. But did not God explain that to Adam? He said, Adam, because of your sin now, it's not going to be easy tilling the ground anymore. It's going to be hard. So you're going to have to sweat. And then what did the, the great Adam, Christ Jesus, come to the earth and do? He came and sweated. He sweated all his life, all that he thought about, everything that was on his mind was put for the souls of humanity. He sweated, even to the what? Death. And then what did not Adam says? You're going to have to sweat even to death until you return back to the dust. And our last for today, and it says, what is Paul's prayer for us? What is Paul's prayer for us? 1 Thessalonians 5.23. First Thessalonians. Verse 5, 23 says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, my brother. Interesting because he linked, he, he talked about the body, which means that the physical is not optional. I just want to point that out. That's very interesting. Amen. So Paul linked what? He linked the spiritual health message, and he linked the physical health message, and he said they must come as one if you want to make it to heaven, they must come as one. And if you look at every false religion that is out there, you see one clear thing. Even for Satan, if Satan wants to use these false religions, he still has to get their mind some kind of clearness for them to, to even speak to them. Look at every false religion. What do they talk about? Mind, body, and spirit. 
mind, body, and spirit. First angel message, second angel message, and third angel message. Mind, body, and spirit. And brothers and sisters, I leave you with this last scripture. It's found in 1 Timothy. Um, First Timothy chapter three, verse ten. First Timothy chapter three, verse ten. And the word of the Lord says, For even when we were with you, this we command you that if any would not work, neither sh oh, wrong scripture. <laughs> neither shall he eat. First Timothy, let me get to that one, chapter three. Verse 10, and let these things also first be approved, then let them use the office of a, oh, I'm reading the wrong scripture again. <laughs> I apologize, it's verse. Is it 410? Yes, yes, I think so. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is our Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. So we have to believe these things, brothers and sisters. We have to really say, are these things are true? And will it really help me spiritually? We're getting to a point, we used to be at a point that people used to fight dress reform. People used to fight the health message. People, but brothers, we're getting to the point that we need as much help as possible. And if this is going to help us get our minds clear that God can speak to us, that his will can be done, then anything that is good for you, we should do it. Because as an elder told me two weeks ago, the devil is out there shooting the people down one by one. He's taking us out one by one, brothers and sisters. He's not going to congregation, and we see it clearly. A brother or sister is here, the next minute they're gone. You wonder what happened to them, you don't know. These are the situations that the devil is coming. He's attacking us one by one, one by one, and we learn Wide is the gate, but narrow is the pathway. So God bless you, brothers and sisters. Thank you for the Sabbath school, and let us pray. Our Lord and Savior, we thank you for your mercy and your kindness. Lord, we ask forgiveness of our sins. Lord, we thank you for the health message physically and spiritually, Lord. And Father, we ask that you will bring your spirit upon us and convict us of the things that we're not doing right in, right in this message, Lord, and the things that we uh, know that we should be doing, but we're not taking part. And as the scripture said, Lord, how can we eat, Lord? How can we eat if we do not work for souls? How can we grow in you, Lord, if we are not being faithful in what that is little. Father, be with the minister today. Be with his words, Lord, that you may hide him behind the cross. That this message that we're about to hear today, Lord, may even bring us another step closer down this narrow path. Guide us and keep us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>